Welcome back to this old house. Today, we'll see how we're protecting our house from the elements. We want to prevent any migration of water going into the house. Here at the University of Florida, they have the largest portable hurricane simulator in the country. I came down to find out what it feels like to stand in the middle of a hurricane. Right here on this old house. This is a great way to start the day. I mean, we're down here working in Rhode Island, the ocean state, so what better place to be than right on the water? That's right. We're right here in Barrington Harbor, and this is one of my favorite places growing up. Well, I don't blame you, man. It's gorgeous. So what have you got in store for us today? I'd like to treat you to an authentic Rhode Island clam bake, something I used to do as a kid. Beats working. I'm all in. Let's go. Kevin, we're coming up here on Paul Aguiar, a really good friend of mine. He's actually the dad of one of my crew guys. He's been shell fishing for over 40 years. Wow. I'm going to get you on his boat. He's going to show you how to call hog. All right. Hey, Paul, how are you? Good. How are you doing? All right. So we're doing some clamming today? Hey, pal, this is Rhode Island. We call them cogs. Oh, all right, cogs. Uh, what are we looking at here? Uh, those are what we call little necks. Little necks, the small guys. You got three different sizes? Yep. Uh, these are cherry stones here. And then the big ones? Yep, these are big core hogs. Big core hogs. All right, so different names are different sizes. And how are you getting them up? What are you working with here? Uh, with this rake right here. It's called a bull rake. Bull rake? Yep, this one's two and a half inch teeth, and this rake is specifically for hard bottom. All right, so we set it down, rake, pull them back up. We ready to go to it? Yeah. All right, show me how. Okay. So how much uh, pole do you have? Uh, I got about 40 feet of pole. Yeah. So now you're on the bottom. What's this motion? I'm just sifting this in through the rake and so that the core hogs just stay in there. That's a lot of work. Hence, bull raking. <laughs> Appropriate name, right? So this is how you get it up? Yep, I use that electric collar there. I can't wait to see what we got. Yeah, that's not too bad, yeah, huh? That's good. It's good. Right. Well, so it looks like we are on our way to a pretty good clam bake. Yep. All right, thank you, Paul. Oh. Time. So the next thing we need is some rockweed. So Kevin, we don't actually bake our food. We steam it. And in order to steam it, we gather rockweed like this, which has these little bubbles that pop when the heat hits it from our hot rocks yep. and create steam, and the steam cooks our food. All right, so let's weed the lighthouse. Excellent. This is like skating on ice. Alright Kevin, I think we have enough rockweed for the clam bake. And how long is the clam bake going to take? Well it's going to take a good part of the day and that's why I got another crew that's working on the clam bake and my other crew is working on the house. We need to go back and check on them. All right, back to the house. You got crews everywhere. Well, it's been about three weeks since we were here last, and the most dramatic change is that the porch off the master suite has been framed in. It's gonna be an open porch, and it's gonna give the homeowners great views of Narragansett Bay. Now looking at the house now, it's hard to believe that we started with a simple cape that was built in the 20s and modified over the years. And after doing some selective demolition, installing some structural steel to account for the new design, and starting the framing, it's really coming along. And last time I was here, we were framing the roof on the main part of the house. More recently, they framed up the bedroom, which is over the garage, and that gives the homeowners a third bedroom. The windows have even arrived, and Andy's working on those right now. Up here on the second floor, all the interior walls have been framed, so now we can get a better sense of the various spaces. Back here over the garage is a small bedroom which will be for the homeowner's young daughter. This will be her space. To the left, right here down the hall, is a full bath, and that will be shared by the daughter and any guests who stay in this front bedroom right here. Now we enter the master suite a large walk-in closet, and a pretty generous bathroom. There'll be a full-size shower and a soaking tub, as well as the lavatories right along this wall. Come around the corner into the master bedroom, and it's a very modest room, but perhaps its best feature is the porch. 
which has almost as much space as the master bedroom itself. In fact, the homeowners are thinking of treating this space as a sleeping porch during the summer. And that'll be great because they'll have nice breezes off the bay. Now, breezes are nice in the summer, but when bad weather kicks up, this side of the house takes a beating from either rain or snow in the winter. And that's what Andy's dealing with. That's all right. Some of our most severe weather comes out of this direction right here. So we want to really protect the house from any water and ice. And the first line of defense that we're doing is using this self-adhering membrane right. to prevent any water from migrating through. And also for any ice that does build up, when it melts, it won't get into the house. Right, keep it out of the house. Now it comes right up to where the intersection of the roof and the wall is, and I see you've installed this lead flashing. And that's going to take the shingles underneath, and any water that comes in here will just run off the lead onto the roof shingles. Exactly, and what we also do with the lead is it's our termination for the sidewall shingles that come down. Right. And before I cover this up with our building paper, I want to put a self-adhering membrane on that onto the wall as so well. So you're going to seal this joint? Exactly. Want to help? Sure. Okay, so I want to peel off a little bit of the release paper. And I want to hold it about an inch above the intersection with the roof and just stick it on. Okay, that takes care of that. And I noticed that you've sealed the sill and the framing up the corner a bit. And we do the same thing, but we typically use the membrane type material. Right, it's not dissimilar from what we've already put down here. But what we're using is uh, another butyl tape that comes from the window manufacturer. Okay, so it uh, has a sticky, well, it's very sticky, but it has some aluminum on one side. Right, and you'll see it's on top of our sill here, yep. so it gives our wood some protection. Okay. And that comes down over the top of our membrane that we have on the roof. Okay, so it's continuous. That's right. All right, well, looks like we're ready for a window. Not quite. There's one more step I like to take as a precaution. What we like to do is put a copper pan on top of this because this window is so close to this roof we want to prevent any migration of water going into the house. Okay. Well, you know, I am familiar with this method, but you know, we've never had a chance to show it on this old house. Well, it's my preferred method of uh, protecting the window in an area where we're so close to the coast. All right, so you had someone fabricate this for you. That's right, a local contractor. And you'll notice that it has a lip on its perimeter. Right. And what that does is it prevents any water that will get in here underneath the window to stop there and then come back out onto the roof and down the lid onto our roof shingles. Right. And it's nicely soldered at the corners so there are no open seams. It's totally sealed off. Exactly. Anything special about attaching it? Well, what we do is just push it down a little bit okay. and back and we'll put two stainless steel nails in the end flange. All right. Now that our pan's in, we're gonna take some tape, put it on the jam, down into our pan to make it even more watertight. So we have all our tape on now, our window's covered. So we want to take our building paper now and bring it down and staple it into place. Okay, staple this up really good. Now when we get to the jam, we want to take our building paper and wrap it inside to the jam to put it up nice and tight all the way down into our pan, around our pan. So the windows we're using are clad on the outside. Yeah, it's an aluminum cladding. Mm -hmm. It's got a finish that's really durable for this saltwater environment that we're in. Mm -hmm. And low-E insulating glass. Yes, and that will really protect the house with the amount of windows that we have from that solar gain in the summer. Set the bottom on the pan, lean it out, and we'll take the grab handles off. All right. Okay. okay. All right, now that we have the handles off, we have to turn all the flanges 90 degrees to the window. And just be careful on the corner there that we don't split the gasket. Let's push that window all the way in. Yeah. Go. Okay. Now let's level the top. Looks like your side's got to go up a little, so let me tack my side. OK, 
Okay, we'll have Chris just wedge that up a little bit. All right, that's perfect. And nail up your side, Norm. Now that looks pretty good. Now a few weeks ago a tropical storm blew through here with 80 mile an hour plus winds. Is this high impact glass? No, this is not impact glass. We're in the 110 mile per hour wind zone. In the 120 mile per hour wind zone, impact glass is required. We did look at putting impact glass here, but the cost was almost double of what we paid for the wow. windows. So if the homeowner wants, we can make them some panels to protect the windows down the road. Good idea, and it will be a lot less expensive for the homeowners. That's a fact. The massive devastation from Hurricane Andrew in 1992 changed the way we built houses to withstand high wind and hurricanes. Much of the research in that area takes place at the University of Florida. So the other day, Kevin stopped in to see their latest testing. Here at the University of Florida, they have the largest portable hurricane simulator in the country. And they use it for all sorts of testing. But today, I came down to find out what it feels like to stand in the middle of a hurricane. And the man who runs this monster is Forrest Masters. Forrest, nice to meet you. Welcome to Gainesville. Thank you. What am I looking at here? Well, we couldn't wait till the next hurricane, so we had to build a machine to simulate the damaging effects of wind and wind-driven rain. And how do you do that? We coupled four 700 horsepower engines to these eight very large fans. Wow. And so I guess the question is, can you make me a hurricane? Yes, we can. Let's go. Okay, strapped in. All right, you're gonna need these. We're gonna ramp up the wind speed from zero to 110 miles per hour. You ready for this? I'm ready. Let's do it. Okay. I can't believe the power. Well, you got to experience nature's fury firsthand. <sighs> the force on you is incredible. I mean, you can only imagine what it's like up against the buildings. And that's why we're going to go back to the lab and we're going to see some tests. Well, the lab sounds nice right now. So failure of the connection between the roof and the wall can result in one of the most catastrophic failures. And this is one of the issues that David is investigating. Okay, hey David, so what are we looking at here? Hey, so this is how we want to see a house built. There's a connector between the roof and the wall. I'm looking at these clips right yep. here, yeah. And then on the back side, there's a collector between the wall plate and the wall itself. So that's strapped there, all right. And then we're going to apply some load to it. There it goes, right? So we lost it right at that clip. You can see a little pulling away. We're pulling some of the nails out and even some of the OSB out oh. as well. So what we see here, 130 mile per hour major hurricane causes failure. Mm -hmm. okay? If we didn't have those clips, we would experience this failure at less than half that load. Less than half. Yeah, and these clips are really inexpensive if you look at the total cost of the home. They make a big difference though, right? Mm. Snap. So hurricanes bring wind-driven rain, and one of the biggest problems we see are older windows 
and we have leakage that occurs where the two sashes meet up in the meeting rail and also here at the sill. And I'm looking at tons of leakage right here, so I'm effectively on the inside of the house. How much wind pressure are you putting on the outside of this window? Well, we've added extra water for effect, but the pressures really are associated with gusts going up to about 60 miles per hour. So we're getting all this leakage and it's not even close to a hurricane. Well, what's the solution? The solution, particularly if you live in an area prone to major hurricanes, is to go with a compression seal window. This window is an awning window and it creates a compression seal, so the wind actually pushes against the window and creates a tighter seal. And in turn, that makes the window more watertight. Well, I'd rather have one of those, but I do want to see what happens to this one when it is in a hurricane. I think we have to. Turn it up. The shingles shed rain from your building. They also keep your attic dry. Mm -hmm. We're performing two tests today to evaluate the load resistance of uh, different shingle systems. This particular shingle has four nails in it. And this is um, replicating how much force is pulling up on the shingle? Exactly. And so we're just going to find out how long it takes for this to fail. Yep. Oh, and so we're seeing it right now. So that's kind of the failure right there where it's separated from the nails. What does that tell us? Well, the data tells us it took about 50 pounds of force to create a failure. On a four nail shingle. Exactly. So now we've got a shingle that you've secured with six nails and you're applying that same force of the wind pulling up on it. And there's the failure. So we can see that we applied 100 pounds of force before the failure occurred, effectively doubling the wind resistance of the shingle system. With just two extra nails. Exactly. And that's why we use a six nail pattern in a high wind region. Kevin, this is an impact resistant window with two panes of glass. The outer pane has two layers of glass which are separated by a special membrane to resist the impact from windborne debris. Mm -hmm. And to prove that, <laughs> we're going to launch this 9 pound 2x4 at 34 miles per hour at the window to test its resistance. All right, let's see this. All right, let her rip. Oh, <laughs> that was awesome. But Forrest, I'm still looking at a lot of broken glass here. Yeah, the glass is broken, but the sacrificial ply is still intact. It's gonna keep all the wind and rain from getting into the house. So a lot easier to change out one window than changing out your entire house. Definitely. And the work that you guys do here, this all ends up in our building codes? It's advancing codes, but it's also helping industry innovate products for hurricane prone areas. Yeah. Well, Forrest, you put on a great show. Thanks Thank for coming you. out. So, um, can I shoot a two by four at the upper pane? Yeah, absolutely. So Andy, I just had a great lesson on why we like architectural shingles. Tell me, that's what we're using up here on our roof. You sure are. We're using a 30-year architectural shingle. Mm -hmm, okay. And the homeowner chose charcoal. So a nice dark color for up here. Talk to me about this nailing pattern that's going to help keep this shingle on our roof. That's a good point. Where we are in this 110 mile an hour wind zone, yep. we want to make sure that these shingles will withstand that. So typically, most people would nail a shingle with four nails. Mm -hmm. We're nailing it with six. So we put one on the end, yep. then two spaced, two spaced, and then our sixth one on the end. And it's very important to do that. This hurricane nailing, if you will, and that is a code in Rhode Island as well. So this is the pattern that's hurricane nailing. That's right. All right. And you'll notice on this white line that you see there on the shingle. Yep, I've got it marked here. The manufacturer put it on for us. Exactly. And if you look at the back of the shingle, you'll see that there's two layers there. So this is where it overlaps. Yes. And so where these two parts of the shingle overlap, that's what that light white line is. Oh. So we want to make sure that our nail is going through both those layers so that the shingle will withstand that high wind. So we got to get the pattern right and we got to get the location of the nailing right to make sure that we've got a strong roof. That's right, because I hate callbacks and I <laughs> do not want to come back. All right, well, you got the nailer, so I'll start bringing you shingles. Very nice. Let's get some of these on. So, Andy, any chance I could convince you to turn this over to your guys so I could talk you down onto that beach so we get the clam bake going? Nothing would make me happier. <laughs> I love to hear it. All right, let's go. So Kevin, the traditional way to do a clam bake is the way that the Native Americans did it, and that starts by digging a hole. Okay. Now you got me moving rocks. So you got a little base here. A little base. So this is our wood. We're using some old pallets. Yeah. A few more rocks for our next level. That's better. All right, Kevin, I think we're ready to light this thing. Oh, and look at you. You've got all the traditional Native American tricks. That is how you start a fire. Cool. Mm. 
Red Cohort Chowder, Manhattan style. Well, it's fast, eh? Yeah. Get that, get all the rocks covered with the rock weed on the edge. Nice layer in the middle. Comes the steam. Very nice. Cheesecloth. All the way over. Put those clams on here. Spread them all out, nice. Veggies. Okay, let's, yeah, let's get those meats over here. Spread them all out. Bring our lobsters in, lobsters. Put them on the edge, like vertically going up like this. Gotta work fast. Point, spread it out. Big potato on top. This tells us when the bake is done. When this is soft, the bake is done. That's our pop-up thermometer. You got it. Okay, tarp. Take this side, double it over. All right, Kevin. I think our clam bake's all done. So let's peel this canvas back and see what it looks like. This is the moment of truth. Oh, Andy, look that at this. That is huh? beautiful. Look at these beauties right here. Yeah. How about Ooh, we, uh, how about we hot too. serve this out? All how right. about if you uh, load up one of those trays, I'll load up one over here. You got some lobsters you get coming one of those in. white bins and I'll put the lobsters in that. You want the lobsters in the white bin? Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's get you another tray. Come on, let's get that to the table. Hey, Richard Trithui. Come on, brother. Here we go. Come on. Richard, can Stop you take talking. some? Stop talking. <laughs> Come on, hurry up. Oh my gosh. Good stuff. Yum. So, I'm saying to the guy, you know, <laughs> I'm here from Barrington. I came up from Woonsocket. That one. Andy, I don't know what to say. I mean, this is an unbelievable meal. Is there anything your crews can't do? You're building us a house, you built us a clam bake. This is terrific. Well, Kevin, we're just getting started, and there is more to come. <laughs> All right, well, there sure is. So until next time, I'm Kevin O'Connor. And I'm Andy Tiplady. For this old house here on the beach in Barrington, Rhode Island. Buy you a steamer? Absolutely. Buy you a bucket of steamers? Coming up next time here in Barrington, Rhode Island. Today we're going to put shingles on the side of the house and solar panels on top of the roof. You're a busy man. We are. Solar is going to go mainstream. All right. We'll take you behind the scenes of one of Newport's most famous mansions. Summer cottage with 65,000 square feet. That's some cottage. It is. And we'll show you a very cool way to heat your house. So with no flame, how are we actually making hot air? That's next time. Thank you.